Hi, this is Mr. Woodbury from College of the Sequoias. This video is for my Math 21 class. We'll be going over Section 11.2, the paired difference test with two examples. All the data that I'm using can be found in the Woodbury Math 21 Stack Crunch group under Section 11.2. The paired difference test is used to compare the difference between paired data. There has to be a one-to-one -one relationship between one value in the first sample and one value in the second sample. Here we'll use lowercase n to represent the number of pairs in the sample. Here's an example. Students improve from the by hand version of an exam to the stack crunch version of the exam. Here we can match up one student's score by hand with their score using stack crunch. The scores are tied together because they're being taken by the same student. When we identify this test, we're looking for two sets of paired data. Let's talk about the differences for this test. First, you have to identify which way you're going to subtract. And as lowercase d, a minus b, uh, you can also just list which group is gonna be population number one. The null hypothesis will be that the population mean difference will be equal to zero. So basically, this is like a one mean test in hiding. The alternate hypothesis will compare mu sub d to zero using either the less than sign the greater than sign, or the not equal to sign. No difference in step two. When we get to step three, we label this as the paired difference test. In step four, in stat crunch, we enter the paired data in two columns, and then we use stat, t stat, paired. Pick the correct column for each sample, select the save differences box, which will help us to check our conditions, in addition, if you need to know the mean and standard deviation of the differences, that column will be helpful as well. We'll leave the value in the null hypothesis as zero and pick the appropriate sign for H sub one. As I mentioned, we use the differences column for checking conditions. Once you've already done the test statistic and p-value, you can construct a QQ plot and a box plot for the differences column. And I'll show you how that goes. I'll also show you a shortcut for checking these conditions. Let's put the conditions on the screen. Uh, there are two conditions that must be met. The first is either the differences come from a population that's normally distributed, which we check with the QQ plot, and that it has no outliers, which we can check with the box plot. Or we can ignore those conditions if the sample size is at least 30. In addition, we have to make sure that the sample size is no more than 5% of the population size, which we've been checking with this condition. Multiply the sample size by 20, make sure the population size is at least that big. One last thing about normally distributed, instead of the QQ plot, there's a, some stack crunch output for something called a Shapiro-Wilk test that we'll use to check this condition. The Shapiro-Wilk test assumes that the data are normally distributed and a low p-value for that test indicates that the data are not normally distributed. Let's try an example. Here are the prices of a dose of 10 medications in Canada and the United States. At the 0.05 level, test the claim that prescription medications cost less in Canada than in the United States. Okay, these are paired data because the first price in each column is for the same medication, Prilosec. That's $1.47 in Canada, $3.31 in the US. Then we have prices for Prozac, Lipitor, et cetera. We have 10 sets of paired data. Let's begin the test. In the hypotheses, we have to start by listing the way that we're going to subtract. The difference I'm going to use is Canada minus the US prices. The null hypothesis is that the mean difference is equal to zero. For the alternate hypothesis, I've got to figure out what sign goes in for H1. And what I'm really thinking about here is what type of number am I going to get in general when I subtract Canadian prices minus US prices? We're testing the claim that Canadian prices are lower. So when we subtract a lower price minus a higher price, that should give us a negative number. What kind of numbers are negative numbers? They're numbers that are less than zero. Another way to think about this is if you list the two populations in the order we have them, 
Canada and US, think about what sign belongs between those two sets of prices. Since we're trying to test the claim that Canadian prices are less than US prices, that less sign indicates which sign we'll use in H sub one. The level of significance was alpha equals 0 0.05. And for the test, we're going to assume this is a pair difference test for now. When we get into stack crunch, we'll actually check the conditions. If the conditions fail, we'll switch to a non-parametric alternative. Let's go to stack crunch. We'll do the calculations and check the conditions. Okay, here we are in stack crunch. The data are in the first three columns where I have the Canadian prices in column two, the US prices in column three. Now to check the conditions, we need to know the differences when we subtract Canada minus US. We can do that actually as part of calculating the test statistic and p-value. Press stat, t stats, paired. For sample one, select Canada, and sample two is in the column US. Click where it says save differences. This is the way that we're going to check the conditions. We have to make sure the differences have no outliers and that they're normally distributed. For the null hypothesis, leave the value in the null hypothesis as zero. And the alternate hypothesis, mu sub d is less than zero. Click compute. And let's ignore the results from the test. Instead, we'll focus on the column of differences. First, we need a box plot of those. Graph, box plot. Select the column of differences. Draw them horizontally, compute. Notice there are no outliers there. Next, we'll construct the QQ plot. Press graph, QQ plot. Again, select the differences. Add the correlation statistic. Put the normal quantiles on the y-axis and press compute. Seems roughly linear. For the correlation statistic, the critical value is 0.918 and ours is 0.954. That tells us that the data come from a population that's roughly normally distributed. So we can go ahead and perform the test. Just a quick note about that normally distributed condition. Here's a table of the critical values for certain values of n. In our problem, n was 10. We had 10 sets of paired data. The critical value was 0.918. Now the correlation statistic from our graph was 0.954. And because that is greater than 0.918, that indicates that the differences are normally distributed. Now back to the results. The test statistic t is negative 10.56 with a p-value that's less than 0 0.0001. Okay, for the test statistic again, that was t equals negative 10.56. Our sample results were more than 10 standard deviations lower than we would expect. That gives us a minuscule p-value of 0 0.0001. Now, since that p-value is less than the level of significance, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. We're saying the null hypothesis is false. And that means that there is sufficient evidence to conclude that H sub one is true, or in this case, that Canadian prices are lower than US prices. So there is sufficient evidence to conclude that prices in Canada are lower than prices in the US. Here's example two. Here are the midterm exam scores of 20 algebra students along with their score on the final exam. At the 0.05 level of significance, test the claim that student scores improve from the midterm to the final. That means that the final exam scores should be higher than the midterm scores or the midterm scores should be lower than the final exam scores. For step one, for D, I'm going to subtract midterm, the first set of data, minus final, the second set of data. By the way, these are paired because the score of 65 on the midterm and 85 on the final both belong to the same student. So they're paired together through a common student. For the null hypothesis, Again, that's mu sub d equals zero, 
what sign should we use for H sub one? Well, again, we're saying that the scores improve from the midterm to the final. So when we subtract in this direction, we should get a negative result. U sub D is less than zero. Again, as I mentioned in the last example, if we write the two populations in the order we're using them, midterm first, then final, think about how the midterm scores compare to the final scores. If the student is improving, the midterm should be lower than the final. That sign less than is the same sign that we use in H sub one. The level of significance was 0 0.05. And again, this appears to be a paired difference test. We'll know for sure when we check the conditions. Let's go to StatCrunch, do the calculations and check the conditions. This time through, I'm gonna show you a second way to check the conditions as part of the process of computing the test stat and the p-value. Press stat, t-stats, paired. We were subtracting the midterm score minus the final score. So for sample one, that's midterm. Sample two, that's final. Instead of saving the differences, I'm going to, going to ignore that for the time being. The null hypothesis is mu sub d equals zero. The alternate, mu sub d is less than zero. What we're really saying here is that the midterm scores are less than the final scores. Down below where it says optional graphs and tables, let's click where it says box plot with mean marker. That will show us if there are any outliers for the differences. And also click where it says Shapiro-Wilk normality test. So the Shapiro-Wilk normality test, what that does is it assumes the data are normally distributed unless the p-value for that test is below 0.05. Let's go ahead and compute and take a look at these results. Okay, our p-value for the Shapiro-Wilk test is 0.5548. Since that's greater than 0.05, that means that the data are normally distributed. Next, let's check for the outliers. And looking at that graph, there are none. Heading back to the results, we can see that the test statistic is negative 3.90 with a p-value of 0 0.0005. Okay, the conditions held. We found that the test statistic was t equals negative 3.90 and the p-value was 0 0.0005. Since that's lower than the level of significance, we will reject the null hypothesis. And again, that means that there is sufficient evidence to support H sub one. In other words, scores improve from the midterm to the final. One quick note about this problem some of my students have struggled with in the past, when they hear the word improve, they think better. And when we think that things are getting better, we think about the greater than sign. But improve means that scores are getting higher from the midterm to the final that means that the midterm scores are lower. So be careful with the wording in these problems.